Welcome to the April 11th, 2022 advance report from McGowan Group clients and NetworthRadio.com listeners. I'm Spencer McGowan, your financial weatherman, and this YouTube channel is the result of a team of nine dedicated professionals at McGowan Group Wealth Management dedicated to helping you get to the next level of expertise in investing decision making. And today's program also contains research on the fixed income and the housing market that you just won't find anywhere else. So be sure to subscribe for YouTube McGowan Group and we will bring you fast paced updates, especially when the markets change. And there's an important change in the financial markets this week, which we're about to get to. All right. Dow Jones Industrial Average year to date is a minus 4%. It also happens to be about where it was a year ago. So bullish investors are actually getting a little peevish with a zero from the Dow over the course of the past year. Here we go. Now, what is this? Well, this was the big announcement this week. It changes everything. And Warren Buffett once said, when the tide goes out, you find out who was bathing naked. And I'm about to cover what that means in terms of the financial markets. You can look at crypto and its collapse from 70,000 Bitcoin down to below 30,000 in January. That was kind of stage one of this. And there will be ways to take advantage of this that we've used for over 35 years. So here we go. A trillion dollars was the Federal Reserve balance sheet. That's electronically printed currency pumped into the system. They buy bonds, they stick them on their balance sheet. When they mature, they antimatter off the balance sheet. So they print money, buy bonds. Here was the collapse of 2008. They printed another two trillion, as they called it the bailout. Then they kept printing money all the way to 2014 and said, we're going to stop. Then interest rates spiked. They stayed at about $4 trillion of electronically printed currency. It did not cause massive inflation, by the way. That was the premise back in 2011. And then they kept right on printing. Inflation did come down after the recovery. And here we have $4 trillion. They shrank the balance sheet by a half a billion dollars or half a trillion dollars, $500 billion. This is the repo market failing at the end of 2019. The repo market highly leveraged uh, banking and trading, and they use an overnight technique. Well, they kind of got they, they kind of got sideways at the end of 19. Then we have the pandemic. They quickly printed three trillion dollars, and they continued printing till they got to nine trillion. This week's announcement: they're going to dial back about 1.3 trillion of that, about 95 billion a month. Well, what does that mean? That giant sucking sound you hear later this year is the liquidity coming out of the system that they had artificially printed that everybody's worried about. Well, what does that do? It pulls the speculation out of the market. So let's look at that speculation. Whoa, boom, what is that? That is tech stocks, the NASDAQ 100, primarily tech. And that's a minus 12% so far this year, actually reached bear market territory back here uh, in February. What's happening? They're collapsing the multiples of overpriced technology stocks. Underpriced technology stocks like Hewlett Packard, Warren Buffett just bought a big old bunch of that uh, because they're only about seven or eight times earnings. What's that theme? Speculation versus value, right? Uh, growth, overpriced growth, value is winning, and there's some good examples of that too. Now, this is actually the fixed income market. So let's take the fixed income market uh, and say, okay, what happens when the value of a bond goes down, the yield is up, right? So they move inversely by definition. This week, the 10-year the Treasury went to 2.7%. What does that do? 10-year Treasury is what the Fed was buying to push the mortgage rates down to spur the economy. They're not going to do it anymore. Now you're 2.7%. That means mortgages are going over 5% for the traditional 30-year mortgage. Well, it used to be below 3%. 
That's 20% less buying power for people that use mortgages. That's already starting to have some impacts that we're seeing from our inside sources on the frenzy to buy houses right now. And if you owned a long-term government securities fund, let's talk about traditional allocations. Here's a pie chart. And if you wanted a low cost portfolio, half would go in fixed income, half would go in the S&P 500. It's low cost. And there are time periods where it works really well and there's time periods when it doesn't. Right now it's not working. A long-term government securities fund, like in your 401k, down 15% for the year. And it started the year the yield was only 2%. Wow. Okay. The Vanguard total bond market makes up a big part of the low cost pie charts. And let's see how it's doing. Vanguard total bond market with a yield of about 2% is down 7% for the year. This is going to take three and a half years to get back to even if the price doesn't go up. That means that the traditional fixed income approach is broken and there'll be some good opportunities later this year in discount fixed income. All right, what's that? That's biotech, another popping bubble. The Fed is popping bubbles. This one is popping down 13% the biotech stocks. What's not down? The value medical dividend stocks made 52 week highs all week long. Wow, they're doing great and they're outperforming the market and they have a yield. So value winning and speculation not. Okay, that's the theme of today's program. Value winning the S&P 500 energy sector extended its gains, even though oil goes from 130 at the Ukrainian invasion to this week went as low as 96, okay? That defines a new trading range. Well, year-to-date total return for the S&P energy sector expanded this week to 44% for the year. Wow, value versus growth. You can see how the theme plays out there. Natural gas. The bad news here is the utility bills are going to be about double where they were a year ago because natural gas supplies the biggest part of the electricity market. Well, 650 was the high this week per million BTUs. The last time we saw that back here in 2008. What, what happened? Well, the shale revolution kept prices low. Now you've got Europe having to buy liquid natural gas. A lot of that coming out of Louisiana. So the bubble that was created with lots of natural gas from fracking, well, that bubble is getting sent over to Europe and it says the pipelines will make a lot of money likely continuing because you've got lots and lots of flow and you're going to hit record demand uh, probably for gasoline this year as well. This is just oil being up 28% for the year. I talked about that trading range. Looks like it's 90 where it was stable right here. 130, wow. And this week 96 after, after the strategic petroleum reserve release. I'm Spencer McGowan, your financial weatherman, YouTube McGowan Group. And don't forget to go to Apple Podcasts type in net worth radio and boom, you can find us there with the more advanced audio program. Thank you for tuning in to net worth media today and our efforts over the past two decades to educate clients and help clients make great decisions. That's the reason that we're here at YouTube McGowan group, Apple podcasts, net worth radio and networthradio.com. The net worth media, effort is designed to help you make great decisions and address value at risk of loss, fluctuation in the markets. Remember, if we talk about a security, doesn't make it a recommendation until you come down and get a plan from McGowan Group Asset Management, the team that cares. You can set a Zoom meeting or an in-office meeting at the Crescent and we'll give you a written plan that encompasses what we believe to be the best allocations. This is a team of 10 devoted to you. That includes the research that you see each week from Reuters, from Bloomberg, and from the best sources. We always post links at networthradio.com for what we believe can help you make great decisions, the research that comes up. Now, the net worth media effort is also designed 
to address cycles in the market, value at risk of loss. At NetWorthRadio.com, you can get the ADV form that shows, yes, we're a fiduciary, a registered investment advisor. It covers the costs of hiring our team to help you in the future ahead. It really helps to have an expert team on your side that you can reach by phone, email, and of course, a team that's here for you every week to address what's going on in the markets because anxiety can often lead investors to make decisions that are either dangerous, chasing things, or selling things when they shouldn't. And that's a big part of our planning effort at McGowan Group Asset Management. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to serving you and your family in the years ahead.